All about TestNG listeners. There are several interfaces that allows you to modify TestNG's behavior. These interfaces are broadly called TestNG listeners. Here are a few listeners. I annotation transformer, I annotation transformer 2, I hookable, I invoked method listeners, I method interceptors, I reporters, I suite listeners and I test suite listeners. So these are different kinds of TestNG listeners which are available and you can find out the basic documentation of TestNG listeners available in TestNG documentation website itself or we can check out the listeners introduction from my friend SW Test Academy website. So in swtestacademy.com slash how to use TestNG listener URL that you can see here my friend owner has discussed so many great information on how to work with iTest listener interface and how to work with the TestNG listener in much greater detail. You can check out the information from there. But in this video, we'll be discussing about some more information on listener. At the same time, we'll be discussing on I suite listeners, I test listeners, I invoked method listeners, and some information on I method interceptors. Let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to IntelliJ IDE. Alright, so this is the same project that we have been discussing so long in our course and this is the same framework that we were discussing so far in developing and scaling the framework from single instance to multiple instance and running in Zelenium extensions and running in multiple grid and also running it with custom controls. So this time we are going to make use of test listener to enhance the power of its execution the reason why we are suddenly focusing on test listener this time is to focus on extend reporting which is going to be the upcoming videos of this course. So what this listener is basically going to do, what is this listener is all about? So if you see in our testng.xml file, it has a suite and it has a test and it has class and classes and methods. So these are the structure of the whole testng XML. So if a test runs, it basically sees this particular XML file, it finds this class and then it executes the test but before that it has what is called as a runner in our case where it goes to this runner and then it also run this test based on the data provider that it has and then it runs the test right and it also has something called as test initialize class where there is a before annotation so it executes this before annotation as well but what if there is a requirement where we need to initialize some other kind of functionality or something like we need to initialize this log reader and settings to be initialized before annotation is being initialized. So in order to do that, hooks come into handy or otherwise called as the listeners come into handy. So as I said, there are different kinds of listeners available and we are going to make use of one such kind of listener, which is nothing but the I test listener. So for doing that, I'm just going to go all the way to the runner class that we have here and then I'm going to create a class and I'm going to call this as report listener. So this listener, what I'm going to do is I am going to implement the interface. Once again in Java, in order to implement an interface, you need to use this implements keyword and then you can type the interface here. So again, the interface starts with I here. So I'm just going to use that and then I test listener. So you can see that IntelliJ IDE is much intelligent enough to show that information to us. And then there is a screwly line here. It shows that there are different declared abstract methods that we need to implement. So I'm just going to alt enter and it says implement methods. So I'm just going to implement all these methods. So you can see that automatically all this method comes to us and then I need to start implementing them. Again, I'm not going to really implement a lot of these things here because there are so many things that I don't really have to implement. But you can try to see what this code is going to basically look like. So I can just type something like system.out.print and then I can just see uh, types of some basic information like on test start and I can just copy this and then I can keep on pasting it over here on test success, on test failure, on test skipped. So you can see all these basic information that we require for our test is automatically coming to us here. And then percentage on test start. 
on test finish so I'm just gonna save all this code here and if I try to run this particular piece of code this code will not actually run because we have to invoke this particular listener from some place where it knows that this is the listener that I need to invoke I can either call this particular listener into the test runner class that we have I can put it somewhere in here or since we're running all the tests from the testnd.xml file I can use something called as listener within the suites over here something like a listeners and within this listeners I can give the class name of the listener so I can just type listener and the class name so here the class name that I have is basically going to be the listener that I just created this is nothing but the report listener and the report listener is sitting in the runner so I need to use the runner dot report listener right so I can just do this runner dot report listener and then I can close this particular tag and now if I run this particular piece of code this is going to start executing the test for me at the same time this is going to print the right the line of code that we just gave you can see that it has the on test start on test start once again once again as well because it is running in parallel with multiple different tests and then on test starts on test success and then on test start so you can see that since we are running multiple different tests here so it has to somehow execute all these different kinds of listeners with different methods it has and once the test completes then it is basically going to print all the different kinds of stuff so you can see that once the test got succeeded it print the on test success here and then on test finish is also coming in here so basically it is executing all the different kinds of methods within this particular listener and then it is printing things for us that's really really cool so now you can think like what is the different usage pattern that we can use this particular listeners again just hold tight because we are going to use this listeners in our extent report and then we can understand how it works so the next listener that we're going to discuss about apart from the i test listener is i test suite so since test ng by itself is running everything in the suites and you can run the suites in multiple suites as well so you can use another listener here so i can create something called as demo suite and again i'm not going to use this guy at all in our framework i'm going to delete this basically just to demonstrate that what this power of suites is all about i can just show you that i suite listener and then you can also hit alt enter oops alt enter implement all the methods so you can see there is something called as on start and on finish which is pretty much like how it had for the on test start and on test finish for the test listener and this is the suite listener so basically this is the suite level and the other one that we saw before is for the test level so you can use them as well so as I said before I'm not really going to implement anything in here so I'm basically going to delete these guys because I'm not going to use them at all the last listener that we're going to discuss today is going to be the I invoked method listener so for that what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go all the way to the runner once again maybe sorry and then I'm going to create something called as test ng listener and I'm going to hit enter and then I'm going to implement the I invoked method listener and it has two different versions for that so I'm just going to use the first one and then I'm going to hit alt enter and implement all the methods so here it has something called as before invocation and after invocation so I'm just going to call these two methods here and you can see there is a very very helpful information here so which kind of method is being invoked here so you can use this information to verify if your invoked method is actually a test method or it's just a normal method because within your framework you can have multiple different methods as well and you can specify that what kind of method is being invoked within your framework so you can verify within a condition here that if the I invoked method is a test method or is this a configuration method so based on the kind of method it is you can do things for you and this is really really handy as well and similarly you can see what is the test method and then you can verify or you can also see if the 
method actually has the configuration that you are looking for. So these are some of the great information that you probably will require while you are working with different kinds of permutations and combination within your framework. And again, we will be using this particular listener within our code while we will be using our extent reporting and executing that. So these are the different kinds of listeners available in TestNG and you can leverage the power of test listeners while you try to execute the test code for you. So for instance, within your test, if you see here within the test initialize class, you can see for every test we are actually initializing the populate settings and writing the log files and doing things. But since we're running things in parallel, we can move these piece of codes into what is called as this particular test ng listener so that it won't invoke for each and every different method. Rather, you can invoke only for the test method that you can execute. So these are the different way that you can think about and put all of them into this test listener and then you can start using them. So these are the test listeners in test ng's guys. So you can use them in different permutations and combination and make sure that you call the test listener either in the test runner class or within the test ng.xml file so that you can make use of them while you run the test as you saw in here. Thank you.